हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू क्लास इलेवन बायोलॉजी लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन अबाउट रेसिमोस इन फ्लोरसेंस एंड साइमोस इन फ्लोरसेंस आउटलाइन सो इन दिस रेसिमोस इन फ्लोरसेंस वी हैव अ टाइप कॉल्ड एज मेन एक्सिस फ्लैट टेंड सो इन दिस मेन एक्सिस व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ द मेन एक्सिस मेन एक्सिस इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज ए रैकिस ओके सो वंस इट इज गेटिंग फ्लैट एंड इट फॉर्म्स दी अ कप लाइक स्ट्रक्चर ओके सो इट इज अ फ्लैट एंड स्ट्रक्चर कॉन्केव और कॉन्वेक्स इन शेप और इट कैन इट कैन बी ग्लोबोस ऑल्सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ हेड और कैपिट्यूलम हेड हेड इन फ्लोरसेंस वी कैन से इट एज ए हेड इन फ्लोरसेंस अनदर नेम फॉर हेड इन फ्लोरसेंस इज कैपिट्यूलम इट इट कैन बी डिटर्मिनेट और इन डिटर्मिनेट इन डिटर्मिनेट इज अ काइंड वेर इट कीप्स ग्रो ग्रोइंग On the flowers are sessile. What is sessile? There is no pedicel. There is no stalk for the flower. And subsessile may be small stalk may be present. So then uh, they form the uh, subtended by an involucre. What is involucre? It is a cup uh, cup shaped structure formed by the flattening of the rachis. A head is a characteristic inflorescence of the family Asteraceae. We might have seen the names of the families. Families, um, Musaceae. It is the name of the family. All the plants of Musaceae will have the mucilaginous substance. Likewise, we have certain characteristic for particular family. In that, the Asteraceae family shows the presence of head inflorescence. And also, it is found in Rubiaceae and Mimosae. Then you have a uh, Taurus. Uh, it contains two types of florets. Under head inflorescence, we have Taurus. Two types of florets. Um, it is a small flower. Flower is a flower. Then, uh, when it is very small, we call it as a floret. Disc floret and tubular floret. a uh, ray floret or ligulate floret are the two types of the flowers being present homogamous homo means same if you have the same type of flowers being present in the capitulum or in veluca then you call it as homogamous head if you have two different types of flowers that is disc florets and ray florets being present in one head then it is called as the heterogamous head disc florets at the center and the head in uh, center of the head and the ray florets towards the periphery is also uh, found okay so the next type of uh, next type of following the racemos in fluorescence so far we have learned about racemos in fluorescence in detail now we shall see about cymos in fluorescence i just told you the outline classification for the cymos in fluorescence that we will learn in detail now so simple cyme it is determinate we know so much only it will grow then only we call it as determinate so this determinate inflorescence consists of single flower it may be a terminal or axillary terminal means at the tip of the stalk at the tip of the stem if it is present it is called as the terminal inflorescence if flowers arise from the side of the stem main stem then it is called as the axillary inflorescence okay monocacial cyme so the main axis with the flower from two lateral bracts only one branch grows further it is called as a helicoid or scorpioid cyme so helicoid cyme axis develops only one side to form the coil like structure okay so scorpioid is axis develop on the alternate sides often becomes the co coiled structure follow scorpioid structure and then the coiled structure and a simple dicacial sign so central axis with the terminal flower further it will have the branches then you call it as the simple dicacium this is true sign that is seen in the case of jasmine so whenever you see jasmine flower you should know it is showing cymos in fluorescence compound dicacium so many flowers from the terminal old flower develops into the lateral simple dicacial cyme polycacial cyme the central axis ends with flower lateral axis branches are repeatedly to give the flowers 
So far we have learnt about the cymose inflorescence. This may uh, look a little confusing but you can learn all these topics only with the diagrams. If you see the diagram, if you are able to explain the diagram, that's all. Okay, so how this is branching, how it is uh, producing the flower, which position? Based on that, it is differentially named. When you are learning, you please learn only the headings by heart that. Then you go for the picture, you see the picture and you get to know how the arrangement is. Then you describe the picture, name you know, then you describe the picture, then it will tell you whatever is there in that paragraph. Okay, then you can go and by heart the example. That is what is, uh, this lesson is about. So, mixed inflorescence as the name indicates, it is a mixture of two different types of inflorescence. It can be racemose and cymose pattern. So, it occurs in a mixed, mixed manner. It is of the following two types. This is, so racemose and the cymose inflorescence is seen indefinite. So, indefinite it will just keep growing. Uh, central axis bears lateral, lateral means towards the side, pedicillate, pedicillate means stock present, syme, syme means what, it, it will, it is not a single flower, uh, maybe three flowers may be present, middle flower will be older, that is what is called as the syme, okay, so example is osimum, Bacticillaster is a kind of inflorescence where main axis bear two opposite Lateral sessile. So here you can see opposite and sessile syme. So previously we have seen pedicillate syme. Now it is a sessile syme. Okay. So and, and the axle of the node. Each of it produces monocacial scorpioid lateral branches of the flowers. Okay. So that is about the mixed inflorescence. Thrusis and verticillaster. You can see in this picture, uh, thrusis and verticillaster is shown here. You can see diagrammatic representation. Follow? So, that is what is explained there. Next, we have special inflorescence. Under that, we have three types. Cyathium, Hypanthodium and Sinanthium. I repeat, Cyathium, Hypanthodium, Sinanthium. So, here are special type of inflorescence. They do not show any of the developmental pattern types are classified under special type of inflorescence. See, cyathium inflorescence consists of small unisexual flowers enclosed by a common involucre. Okay, so in a common involucre or common cup-like structure, it is present which mimics a single flower. Which is uh, mimicking single flower, it looks like. Okay, male flowers are organized in a scorpioid manner. Female or in the solitary manner, that is single, single female flower is present and it is centrally located and long pedestal is present. So, male flowers are represented by the stamen and female flowers are represented by pistil. Pistil is nothing but the gynecium. So, you can see this involucre, it may look like the uh, sepal but it is not so. The green color thing, whichever you are seeing is the inflorescence. What inflorescence it is? We are reading about Cyathium. So, in this we have two types of flowers. That is male flower and female flower. So, only one stamen and anther is present. That is what is the flower itself. Okay. And then only one pistil is present. That is what is the female flower. Okay. So, next we have a condition called as the Hypanthodium. So, here it is hollow. A uh, global structure consisting of unisexual flowers present on the inner side of the receptacle. So, what is receptacle? It is a cavity like where uh, the flowers will be attached to. Okay, receptacle is closed leaving a small opening is called as the osteole. So, the small opening of the inflorescence is described as the osteole and it covers a... Uh, it is covered by bracts. It is a series of bracts are present. Male flowers are present near to the osteole, near to the um, end, top end where the uh, insect can enter. There the male flowers will be present. And neutral flowers and female flowers are present in the uh, middle and below region. 
Sinanthium is another type of inflorescence. It is circular, disc-like, fleshy, open receptacle. It is bearing the pistillate flowers at the center and staminate flowers at the periphery. Okay, so the flower, when we are coming to the flowers as such, so uh, flowers are, as you know, they are the reproductive part of the flower. Then when it is having all the four worlds, it is called as complete flower. And when it is not having all the four worlds, it is called as the incomplete flower. Okay, so the uh, flowers may be by, uh, perfect. Okay, what is perfect? When both andrisium and gynesium present, it is called as perfect. When flowers contain only one essential world, that is either andrisium or gynesium, then it is called as imperfect flower. So if it is a male flower, it is called as terminate flower. If it is a female flower, it is called as the pistillate flower. Okay, so plant itself may be the male plant or female plant or bisexual plant. So bisexual plant is called as hermaphroditic. Hermaphroditic, uh, do you remember when we discussed about earthworm hermaphrodites, right? So when both the sex are present in the same body, we describe them as hermaphrodites. Monoecious, both male and female flowers are present in the same plant. Then it is called as the monoecious. Then dioecious, male and female plants are separate. Then it is called as the dioecious plant. Then polygamous type, the condition in which bisexual and unisexual flowers occur in the same plant. Then it is called as the polygamous type. Okay. Symmetry. So, what is symmetry? As you know, uh, how to cut them into equal halves. Okay, yeah. A flower is symmetrical when it is divided into equal halves in any plane running through the center. Flow, flower symmetry is an important structural adaptation for the pollination. For pollination of flower, the uh, flower should be symmetrical. It should open out to allow the insect for pollination. Actinomorphic, it is also called as radial or polysymmetric. The flower shows two major uh, kind of the um, symmetry. They are actinomorphic and zygomorphic. Some of the flowers are asymmetrical. Okay, so which are, whichever you see here, 4.12 is actinomorphic. Any plant can be divided into two equal halves. Then here zygomorphic only one plane if you cut only it will come as the two equal halves. If you go for some other plane it will not come as the two equal halves. And if you have the asymmetrical flower whichever plane you cut it will not be cut into two equal halves. Then it is called as the asymmetrical flower. Okay. So then accessory organs arrangement of the worlds. The position of the perianth. I told you know so sepals and petals and tepals. Or the are related to one another. So uh, the perianth arrangement is discussed here. It can be cyclic. All floral parts are arranged in a definite whirl. Then it is called as the cyclic. If you can see, a hibiscus is cyclic only. So everything is arranged in a particular way. A cyclic floral parts are not arranged. Uh, it is arranged in spirals or in an elongated fleshy torus condition. Then uh, spirocyclic or hemicyclic, some plants are in whorls and other plants are in the spiral. Then calyx, uh, it protects the outermost, uh, it is the outermost layer of the flower. It protects the flower in the bud condition. Uh, the, the calyx may be fused to form the condition uh, that is uh, syncephalus. If it is free, it is called as the aposepalus. I told you already. So first we see A, A aposepalus. Yeah, the flower is having uh, distinct sepals. Syncephalus here, we have the flowers with united or fused sepals. Duration of the floral parts. So you might have seen brinjal. So after it becomes a fruit, also it will not leave its calyx on top. Right, that is what is discussed here, duration of floral parts. What is the green plant of the brinjal fruit? Have you seen? Yes, caducus or fugacious calyx. So it will never fall down after it forms the fruit. Deciduous calyx falls soon after opening of the flower. One time the flower is open, sometimes the calyx will fall down. Persistent calyx, you can see 
in the case of the brinjal acrescent calyx it is uh, it is growing along with the fruit okay physalis is a condition where we will eat the calyx also then shapes of the calyx yes it is important shapes of the calyx it can be bell shaped it is called as campanulate the fruiting calyx is urn shaped what is urn it is like a pot okay so that is uh, urciolate then uh, the tura calyx is uh, tube like and it is called as the tubular calyx then some of the uh, calyx are colored to attract the in insects they are called as the petaloid calyx okay so calyx how we shall see about corolla corolla is the most attractive part of the plant so the flowers are brightly colored to attract the pollinators we have a condition called as apopetalus where the petals are distinct they are separate and sympetalus is a condition where they are fused with one another so perianth uh, i do, told you about this it is undifferentiated calyx and corolla of the flower that is called as the tepal okay so tepals together is called as the perianth apotepalus when it is few when it is free when it is fused it is called as syntepalus okay so estivation is the arrangement of the sepals and petals is called as the estivation okay flowers bud is said to be uh estivation so here you can see different uh, different arrangement of the petals and also the calyx so to start with estivation of the sepals here valvate margins of the sepals or petals do not overlap with one another they just uh, lie next one next to the other then it is valvate twisted one margin of the petal or tepal is overlapping another then it is called as twisted estivation then imbricate imbricate estivation sepals and petals are irregularly overlapping each other then it is called as the imbricate quenential it is a type of imbricate estivation in which two petals are external and two petals are internal that condition is called as the quenential maxillary large posterior petal both margins overlap lateral petals then it is called as the maxillary so then coming to the andrisium essential part of the flower is the andrisium andrisium has got the filament and then the anther so based on their presence and how they are fused or free or where they it is present based on that the andrisium is differentially classified so anther is upper swollen part of the with the microsporangia that is uh, pollen grains and uh, the filament is the stalk of the stamen connective the tissue connecting the anther lobe is called as the connective uh, anther typically contain two compartments called as the theca each theca consists of two microsporangia fused to form the lacule so sterile stamens are called as the staminodes sterile means it will not produce any pollen grain it is called as the staminode and distinct stamen which are which are not fused with one another they are called as the distinct free stamens which do not fuse with other parts of the flower apo staminous flower with the stamen that are free and distinct fusion of stamens a fusion of stamens fusing among themselves or with other parts of the flower they are of two types conation and adnation conation refers to the fusion of stamens among themselves so adelphi syngenesious and cynandrous adelphi filaments conate into one or more bundles but an anther are free then it is called as the adelphi mode adelphus filaments are um, just fused with one another it is forming the tube like structure diadelphus Uh, this are uh, few stamen fuse and uh, few stamens uh, may uh, stand free okay so in the case of uh, a flower which you see in fabaceae it may contain nine stamens fused and one single stamen that is condition called as a diadelphus polyadelphus adelphus is a condition bunch bunch bunches of uh, uh, stamens are being present so anther is conate and filament uh, filament free it is called as syngenesious type cynandrous filaments and anthers are completely fused and it is called as the cynandrous type 
Adnation refers to the fusion of stamens with other floral part epipetalus. Okay, so epipetalus uh, stamens are adnate to the sepals. Uh, epipetalus is the stamens adnate to the tepals and petals. And gynostesium is a conation product of stamens and stigma is called as the gynostesium. Then pollinium, pollen grains are fused together to form a single mass and it is called as pollinium. So arrangement of the stamens related to the length. Four stamens of which two long and two short then it is called as diadymus. Then you have tetradynamus, uh, six stamens of which four with long filaments and two with short filaments then it is called as the tetradynamus. Then you have etra, heterostaminus. Here the stamens are of a different length and anther. So monothecal, theca refers to the sac or bag like structure. One lobe with two microsporangia. They are kidney shaped in cross section. Dithecal, it is a typical type having two lobes with four microsporangia. Anther attachment. Anther can be attached to the stamen at different locations based on their attachment at different locations. They are differentially named. So, basifix, base of the anther is attached to the tip of the filament. Dorsifix, apex of the filament is attached to the dorsal side of the anther. Versatile filament is attached to the another anther at midpoint. Adnate filament is continued from the base to the apex. So, these are the differential uh, classification based on the fixation to the stamen. Next floral part is obviously known to you. It is gynesium. So the pistil consists of an expanded basal portion called as ovary. So elongated section and the style and the apical structure is called as the stigma. Okay, ovary with the type is called as stipulate ovary. And uh, carpal. Carpal is a con where uh, you have the ovary when it is cut into the cross section. You can see the carpal. So, based on the number of carpal, it is differentially classified as unicarpillary, bicarpillary, tricarpillary, tetracarpillary and multicarpillary. So, fusion of the carpals, the carpals may be fused and sometimes may not be fused. Upper carpus, so distinct carpals, they are not fused. Syncarpus, they are fused. Carpals are fused. So, number of locules. So, locules is a space where the seed is present. Ovary bears ovule. And uh, it is with the connective tissue, it is called as the placenta. Septum is a cross wall of the partition of the ovary. The walls of the ovary and septa form a cavity called as the locule. Like that, tetraocular, pentalocular ovaries are present according to the locule numbers. More than locule ovaries are plurilocular. Plurilocular means more locules are present. Extension of the condensed internode and receptacle. So, anthophore, the internodal elongation between calyx and corolla. Okay. So, then androphore, it is the internodal elongation between corolla and andrisium. So, the distance between the corolla and andrisium. Gynophore, the internodal elongation between andrisium and gynesium. So, based on their difference and uh, the Space, they are differentially named as gynandrophore, where the unified internodal elongation between corolla and andrisium and andrisium and gynesium. Okay, so then everything you can read only with the diagram. Ovary position, the ovary can be uh, seen above or below or in the middle. See position of the ovary. If all the floral parts arise from the base of the ovary, ovary is there. From its base, if all the floral parts arise, so ovary is on top. Okay, follow? So, then you call them as the ovary superior. If all the floral parts arise on top of the ovary, then ovary will be down. Then it is called as the ovary inferior. Sometimes in the middle portion of the ovary also, the other floral parts arise. That is called as the half inferior ovary. Okay? So, we have the condition where we have hypogynous, epigynous and epihypogynous, perigynous, epiperigynous.
So hypogynous is a condition where pe sepals and petals and stamens are attached at the base of the superior ovary. Epihypogynous ovary, the term is used for sepal and petals. The stamen attached at the middle of the ovary. Epigynous type, the term is used for sepals, petals and stamens attached at the tip of the inferior ovary. Then perigynous, the term is used for hypanth hypanthodium attached at the base of the superior of the ovary. And epiperigynous, epi here we have the hypothodium attached at the apex of the inferior ovary. So perianth and uh, androsial position uh, thalamus. It describes the placement of the perianth and androsium relative to ovary and the hypothodium is present. How to construct the floral diagram and floral formula that we will learn in detail. Okay. So first you should know the symbol and how to read. If BR is written it is called bracteate. E bracteate, bracteolate, E bracteolate, actinomorphic, zygomorphic. These are the symbols by which we can describe the flowers. Okay. So, so far we have learnt about calyx, corolla, andrisium and gynesium.